Welcome to another Pro Football Dog podcast. Very special off-season podcast today. First of all, because it's spring break and a little bit of daddy duty. I'm actually from the home studio, not at the office, but that's not the only reason. A couple other reasons. Uh, we got a fun-filled podcast today dealing with trivia, trolling, a 17-game season, you know, uh, some uh, what happened here, videos, end of an era, lots of fun stuff, but mostly because of my special guest for two reasons. Number one, I'm going to try and butcher his name, so don't laugh at me. Number two, it's somebody who I have enjoyed in my time watching him on ESPN. He has a very special and unique, unique talent. So uh, uh, it's my pleasure to have, and he's actually going to stay and kind of co-host. We'll do the guest segment and he'll co-host with me the whole, uh, both segments today. Paul Hembukidis. Paul Hembo or Hembo as everybody knows him. Okay, grade me. How was that? I, I'll give you like an eight and a half. Like you, okay. you, stuck, the, you stuck the landing. But it's a, it was a, just a little bit shaky. Hembakitis is how it's pronounced. You got closer than most people do. But like you said, almost everybody knows me uh, affectionately or not so much so as, as Hembo. So we're, I'm, I'm, I'm all good if you want to roll with me that way. I'm, I'm great with that. And, you know, what's funny for me is my last name is only four letters. I guarantee you half the world or more cannot spell it. <laughs> I, look, I've got autographs jerseys from players and I won't mention who that misspelled my last name that I've done surgery on and they're trying <laughs> to correct it and it's just four letters but I would argue it's probably as hard to pronounce or maybe harder than yours uh, yeah uh, yes there's nothing's worse than when you're sitting outside of a restaurant you're holding the buzzer they call your name over the loudspeaker and it, the, the, the name that they say is is so unrecognizable that you're, you're not even sure that it's your table that they're calling you hope that your, your red <laughs> buzzer is, is vibrating otherwise you have no idea if, if they have a table for you or not yeah, well, thanks for giving me the phonetics. I'm not even a professional doing that. I, the, the, the second uh, syllable would have gotten me. I would not have, have, uh, have gotten that. Uh, but uh, yeah, my last name, uh, uh, K-O, this, that, oh, spelling is amazing. C-H-A-O-A-O-U-O-W, everything <laughs> black, you know. Uh, right. Kind of so we're, we're kind of the same that way. All right, so I wanted to have Hembo on because we've never met before. Kind enough to connect over Twitter, follow him, love his stuff. And I think what you do is very, very creative and different. So one of the reasons I wanted to bring you on, because it's the Pro Football Doc podcast, and I guess I can do what I want, especially in That's Austin. right. And we have exactly some deep right. dives here. And I think it's be fun for the audience to hear from you. And also, I don't know if you know this. Uh, look, they got a sale in the background here. You remember the show? Okay. Trivia for you, Mr. Trivia. Mm. The name of the show he hosted. The name of the show that Junior Seau hosted. Yes. Oh, yes, I got him. That's not ringing any bells for me, man. I, what, I, don't, know if, I don't know if that's because of my age or that's because of my, of that, my inexperience. But either way, nothing's coming to mind. Uh, it was towards the end of his career. And, okay, it wasn't mainstream. T it was, I think it was Discovery Channel, something like that. Mm -hmm. And he even did it when he rejoined the Patriots, which obviously probably Bill didn't love. And it was a show that I actually liked. He's a good friend of mine, et cetera. And it was called Sports Jobs. Okay. And, and, and I'm just thrilled I got the trivia guy on a trivia question. Uh, you're you're, you're, yeah, you're up 1-0 right now. It's yeah. Good stuff for you. So, uh, like, take a picture of the scoreboard. It won't last. <laughs> That's one of those things. That's like the 16th seed against the first seed. You got the first basket. <laughs> against Gonzaga, take a picture of that scoreboard and save it for life. It's not going to last. Fair enough. Um, so his premise was uh, to do shows on people with different jobs in sport. And it was, there was a famous episode where he was, he interviewed and figured out what it was like to be a rodeo clown. And he was a rodeo clown himself. Uh, you know, changing over the ice in Boston Garden from ice to the to mm. the uh, Celtic parquet floor. You know, uh, he wanted to do one on medical, but uh, at the time I was still with the team and they didn't want to have that no. <laughs> uh, kind of thing. But some of these really fun, different jobs in sports. And I feel like if he didn't re come out of, quote, graduation, however you call it, retirement, 
Right. He probably would have had a second season and your job would have been one of the ones he would have profiled. <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying to carry on the tradition a little bit, right? And I think some of this background stuff and stuff is cool. So you're the content producer for ESPN and Get Up and Greeny, et cetera. And you're the trivia master, right? So That's right. tell us how this job evolved, how you got into this. There's no like uh, graduate de degree program for what you do, right? <laughs> no major for what you do. Uh, so uh, tell us about no. it. So if you had asked me like, I'm 30 now. So if you had asked me say 15 years ago, what my dream job was or what I wanted to be when I grew up, I would have said, I want to play shortstop for the Phillies. That obviously was not going to happen. If you had asked me what my runner up choice was, it would probably be something approximating what I'm doing now. Like I, like so many of my friends and people who I'm sure you grew up with too, was just a fanatic sports fan. I grew up in Philadelphia and loved all the teams and watched everything imaginable, you know, read the newspapers in the morning on the way to school, the box scores, like that's kind of, that kind of stuff. But it never occurred to me that a line of work like this existed. And to this day, one, one really does. And I like to, I like to think that in some sense, I've sort of created a, a niche for myself that might not be something so easy to duplicate, but I got to ESPN and, and, and in that role originally was a researcher. So ESPN assigns research, researchers to every show that it does. And as you can imagine, there's a pretty extensive uh, onboarding or training process by which you learn how to use all the tools to find uh, any answer to any question that anyone on TV might want to answer, right? So that's sort of how it starts. And I got my way somehow onto the Mike and Mike staff. Uh, I think it was the spring of 2015. And just sitting there for four hours every day, listening to those guys talk about sports and mostly football, you just hone your skills and you learn to follow along with the conversation and you learn to look things up as they're going. And that really trains you like that teaches you something that's like on the job training that you can't duplicate any other way. So you do that for long enough, you get kind of good at looking up stuff about sports and, and on the radio, we could do all sorts of funny bits and trivia and those kinds of, of things. So over the course of time, um, I, I was lucky enough to have gotten a promotion and now I work on get up the, the morning a TV show that you referenced and also Greeny's radio show. And I've been able to pull a lot of those sort of fun research attributes and sprinkle them on to those shows now. One of them is the, the daily trivia question, which is so much fun for us. Another is what we like to call trolling, which is like almost like little text messages that I can pop up onto the screen in real time from wherever I am to supplement anything someone is saying at the time, which is sort of a unique space that as far as I know, I'm the only person at ESPN that can do that or is allowed to do that, which is probably a decision that someone should have <laughs> made against me at some point, but so far I've not gotten myself fired. So when you add all these things on top of each other and all the relationships I've been able to cultivate, it's actually pretty astonishing how many different shows and different people on TV or radio that I can have relationships with and impact their shows in fun ways. Just, you know, just having, you know, phone numbers for all these people, I've become something of a resource for all of them, which, you know, can be a lot of work, but at the same time is so incredibly rewarding because anytime I send a note to somebody, it can be on TV or the radio in five minutes, right? It can become a topic of conversation. It can be the basis of an entire discussion. So in some sense, I feel like even though I'm not usually the person talking on the air, I do wield some sort of unique power in the information that I'm able to share. And that is something that is awfully fun and rewarding every time it happens, just like the very first time it happened, it still, you know, happens every day still now. And every time it does, it, it, it gives me this sort of uh, almost like dopamine rush. Like no matter how many times um, I'll get a note on TV or the, uh, you know, on the air in any sense, like, it's like, this is what I want to do. And I love it so much. Like, it's really, it's really that simple. Like it is something of a dream job. And I get that affirmation every single day. Awesome. Well, you, you might be opening up Pandora's box here because there's been many times whether and get up in the, in the morning or whatever and greeny or somebody. And, and, and I love the guys. I mean, I, I, Dan and I, we started a relationship on Twitter. Was, this is before he became big time. I was like, I said, your stuff is so good. You're going to rock it to the top. And he was like, you know, <laughs> yeah. whatever. And literally two months later, he's <laughs> like, you know, owns it all. He is awesome. But sometimes I'll text yeah. Dan directly something and he might sneak it in, but now I might text you and, <laughs> you know, whether it's injury related, it. right. Or it's an injury. Of course. Tape. Or or uh, <laughs> or something. You know, so you might live to regret that part. Uh, so I'll tell me it, of your pop up notes. Which one do you regret not putting in, and which one do you regret maybe putting up, and and maybe your best one too. Yeah. So those notes that I pop up onto the screen can serve a bunch of different purposes. Like for example, today Dan Orlovsky was sharing a story in which. He and John Kitna went on, you know, in training camp to go play golf, you know, like all the time and sneak out of camp and stuff. And as he was talking about 
that I happened to put on the screen that Valiant's team happened to go 0 and 16. <laughs> so perhaps they shouldn't have been spending all of their time in, in training camp playing golf instead of trying to win a football game. So that's an example of a fun way to use that, that mechanism. Another way is just by like, because I text these people throughout the show, I have a good idea what they're going to say. And if they're going to use one of my notes, it's really, it's always fun to, you know, for when we can use Dan as the example, Dan starts talking about how Kyle Shanahan's uh, offense is, you know, predicated upon uh, the quarterback playing under center and using the play action pass. And some note that I have sent him that he'll, you know, regurgitate, I can simultaneously pop onto the screen and reaffirm what he's saying, like in real time, it's sort of like, um, like, you know, his, his, his lips, my, my, my stat, and it, and it just sort of marries each other in a way that no other show can do. And it's just sort of a fun way to do it. I have made a handful of mistakes on, on, on that function because there's no stopping, like, you know, I can literally hit anything and it goes on a TV, right? So like, there's nothing stopping me from, you know, putting in, you know, texting on something outrageous. I'm, I'm willing to lose the responsibility, but there have been times where I've, you know, had typos or I'll put a dollar sign and like, it doesn't read it properly. So it shows a bunch of coding and that kind of stuff. So I have had to like refine the skill over the course of time, but like, I do like to keep track of how many, you know, shows I can go without making a mistake and I'm doing pretty well right now. But anytime that I'll make one, I always have to humble myself and make sure like no one's reading this before it goes on the TV. So don't take advantage of this, you know, this uh, opportunity that you have and mess it up for, you know, for the next person and for myself in the future. So it is a, it, it, it is fun. And it's also something of an art to time it and to have the information marry exactly what the analyst is saying. No, that's great. And so that's, that's a quite a responsibility though, a typo or <laughs> And no one's yep. screening your content, so you got to think think twice. You know, <laughs> I do that on sometimes, but it's not as big yeah. a platform as your TV show. Like, ah, should I do this? Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. I want to know for Dan because we all love Dan. Did you did yep. you ask him? Did you ask him when he was golfing that day if he had a foot out of bounds or is he? You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's it's the gift that keeps on giving. Like that's <laughs> that. But the, the great thing is that he's such a good sport about everything. Like Dan occupies a space much. He has all this extraordinary this this gravity as being a a pro for nearly 10 years and all that stuff, but he's also so self-deprecating, which is, I think, a big reason why he's become so popular, especially in the online community, because he's so real and he engages with the audience like you and I are talking right now. Uh, it's really easy when you're on TV or even when you're doing things like this to try and be so polished, like the best, ver like that's not what people gravitate to anymore, right? So Dan's just himself and he's totally cool with you not being cool with it. And that's like, that's probably like the best quality a person can have working in this medium right now. Yeah, I, you know, I sort of, you know, my silly stuff. I mean, when I started doing this, literally, I mean, I was on my couch after being, you know, in the league and guy, you know, goes down and I'm like, the announcer says, I think he's going to be okay. He walked off. And I'm like, no, I think he tore his ACL. The season's done. My wife says, tell to someone who cares and sign yeah. me up on Twitter. I had no idea. But when I started doing it and doing this analysis from my couch, now we're in kind of a you know, uh, a control room, war room, and trying to be more professional, but it's still just video. So when, when people come at me, you're on your couch, how do you know? It's, I'm like, you're right. It's just video. I mean, you know, it's an opinion, uh, maybe informed opinion, but it's based on video. It's not based on an exam. And, uh, you know, you're from Philadelphia. I don't know if you've noticed uh, over time, Philly fans don't like me very much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's fair. The good That's, news and bad news is I've been trending in Philadelphia on Twitter several times and not always for good news, right? It was, you know, when Carson Wentz went down, you know, and I say that's more than an ACL and his yeah. LCQ or, or the multitude of Sixers injuries every time there's, yeah. there's something. And, and I always tell Philly fans, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just, you know. So here's what I'd say. Uh, two things. If, if Philly doesn't like you, take that as a compliment. As, as, a, as a proud Philadelphian, as a fan of the, of the teams in Philadelphia, take it as a compliment. It's not to your detriment. And secondly, I find myself on the same, like, but of the same thing. But that's, that's just the, like, that's, so you do most of your stuff on Twitter and so do I. Mm -hmm. That's just how people are there. And so long as you can use the medium and take it with a grain of salt, knowing that if any of those people saw you in the street, they would want to take a picture for you, with you and ask for your autograph. You're good with it, but that's just the, you know the the places that that's how how the space is occupied now. So like I, what I've learned, and I'm sure like you learned, is you 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 occupy a space on Twitter that's very unique, and you're better at what you do than anyone else is at what they do. Um, th that being said, people are still always going to want affirmation instead of information that might uh, be opposite to what they themselves believe. 
And I very quickly learned, like, you can't worry about that kind of stuff, right? Like, all you have to do is, you know, your job as best you can, because ultimately, if you do that as well as, I mean, you're doing that as well as anybody, if not better than anybody else, who cares what someone with 321, you know, bot followers has to say about you? I mean, at first, it's a little bit jarring, but over the course of time, you sort of learn that just sort of the-, the Well, you know, I, I, I agree with you, and Philly's one of those passionate uh, cities. Oh, yeah. But exactly. here's what I also say, look, Hembo, I, I've had GMs yell at me, like, what are you doing? Why is this up? And, and you know, I, I, I on, a, on a Bible, on, on my kids, the honest truth, a GM was giving me a hard time about the injuries once. And I looked at him in 100% seriousness and said, look, you have to understand, on Paul Revere, I'm not the British. <laughs> that's good. Like, but that's a, actually a really good example because I have been, like, I don't have the kind of connections in the league that you do, but I even so have been surprised at how intently front office types, I guess, listen and, and watch. Like they, they know what's said. They know what's, what's, what's written in a way that I did not realize that the, like when I got into this industry, I had no idea they cared so much about public relations in that sense, but they absolutely do. And that's a, that story is a really good example of such. I've had a few instances in which people cared about numbers that I tweeted or shared with someone else to the extent that I could not believe but I suppose when people have a vested interest in the information not getting out there, it, it stands the reason. Yeah. So when you're doing all this stuff and your trivia questions and all this stuff, how much of it is you just know it because you have that sports encyclopedia in your brain? How much is it that you have to go find it and uh, now maybe verify or how, how does that work? Or is it just all up, up there and you know it? So um, what I like to tell people is I don't know everything, but I know how to find everything. So when you're a researcher, it doesn't do you any good to, I mean, it does you good to know stuff, but I never put anything on TV without checking it first because why wouldn't I? Um, like if you took me to you know, trivia night, I, I do well, but I might not clean up the way that you expect. But if you ask me to find something obscure, there's a better chance that I'll find it than most anybody in the world, right? In terms of, because that's my job. I'm a researcher. I'm not a know-it-all. So there's no, there's like the, the, the knowledge that I have only is useful insofar as what to look up. It's not useful insofar as let's not bother looking up because I trust my, you know, my memory here or some such nonsense. Like there's no value in that. Um, you know, one of the first things that you learn when you join the research department at ESPN is the phrase verify like a champion. Like you can't check things um, often enough. And I, I'll never put something on TV from memory. Like, I mean, very rarely would I do that. So like I, I always tell people like, I'll find anything for you, but I'm not going to pull it off the top of my head. So anytime, even if you get like a, if Greeny will like say, Hembo, how is this guy's name pronounced? Even if I know, I'll always say, stand by, I'll double check. I won't just regurgitate it because if there's a one in one hundred hundred chance I'm wrong and that ends up on TV, that's on me. Right. And there's no obvious reason for that to happen unless, you know, we're against the, you know, some sort of time crunch. Right. Right. I got it. So, uh, uh, so you're saying that even though you're known as this amazing trivia guy and you stump all these people, you might not win the trivia contest yourself. That's right. So most of my questions, a lot of my questions, I should say, I put uh, on TV because I wouldn't have guessed that the right answer is the right answer. So like a lot of it in the morning for me is just like finding something that I think is interesting or counterintuitive or hard to guess the right answer to because I mean, I do this every single day. You run out of questions pretty quickly if you're just going off of your knowledge base, right? So, I mean, I've obviously learned a lot over time in doing that, but the more, the much more valuable skill is mm -hmm. to identify what to look up and know how to do it than just to have obtained a lot of knowledge. And, and do it quickly. That too, yeah. I mean, <laughs> a lot of these things, so like if I, you might see some of the notes I'll, I'll throw up on TV, like, like let's, let's say, we'll, we'll use Dan as our example again. Like he might be giving a 60 second answer for something. He might start, um, talking about something might, 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 you know, something in my brain might be triggered. And by the end of his answer, I have something on the screen. And in the 40 seconds in between, that's when I've looked it up and popped it on. Like that's, you, ha you have to be able to think that quickly in live television. And over the course of time, I've, I've, I like to think I've gotten to a place where I can do that well. No, I think it's, it's uh, great. I love your stuff and how immediate it is. And I, it's like, uh, <laughs> you know, like back in the day, people were impressed that, uh, you know, when the winner of the Super Bowl, I'm going to Disney World, and the next day they'd be there, right? And they'd be right, like, yep. this is within seconds. I mean, <laughs> That's right. Uh, um, it just takes a lot of, a lot of reps. And it's a very unique, uh, it's a very unique skill to have. It's probably not going to be that all that useful for whatever I do next, but it works for now. 
Well, if it's your dream job, you, you should be good. So before we thank you, uh, Hembo is going to stay with it and, and co-host. And, and, and look, if we had the ability to pop up, I'd love to have pop up. So uh, do oral pop ins as we get okay. to the next segment. But before we close here, I'm going to ask you, a, I'm going to stretch my luck and ask you a second pseudo trivia question. Okay. Uh, what's special about yesterday? About March 28th of 2021? Yeah, of March, yeah, of about Sunday. What's special about yesterday? I mean... It's kind of a trick question, so... <laughs> I don't it remember. Is, it is, is it the anniversary uh, of something significant? Well, s sort of. <laughs> uh, it is, let's see. Uh, where am I going here with this? Uh, how do I get March 28th. Screen. How do I get rid of this screen here? What is special about March 28th? Can't I'm trying to get it to the screen that I want. Oh, here we go. This is what's special. It's the annual trolling day for Tom Brady and everyone against the Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> <laughs> 28 to 3. Fair enough. Um, that's, that, that remains the most remarkable football game I've ever watched. In fact, uh, it, it's, it's, I, I don't like to admit it, but because I go, wake up so early for all these shows, I have to sleep awfully early. And that was a game. I swear I was sitting up in bed when it was 28 to three contemplating, turning it off. And I decided I was going to wait one more drive in that drive. The Patriots scored. I stayed up. And of course the rest is history, but I can't imagine uh, working on Mike and Mike the next day. <laughs> had I gone to sleep, woken up to learn that they had overcome a 25 point deficit and I missed all of it. Well, I mean, I, I, I don't know. It's starting to be arguable whether Tom Brady's trolling ability in social media game is better than his game on the field. Yeah, <laughs> he's just great at everything, man. So pretty good uh, stuff there. All right, we'll take a quick break and we'll come back with some uh, real topics and other things and love to get Hembo's continued contribution. Thanks for listening to the Pro Football Doc Podcast. Quick break and we'll be right back. <laughs> 